You're watching Golden State Warriors today. Harrison Graham and Chase Sr. with you. Give us a follow on Twitter at HGrahamNFL, at Chase underscore Sr. Trade alert because the Golden State Warriors have made a move, Chase. They are shipping out Eric Pascal to the Utah Jazz. Not the trade of significance that many Warriors fans have been hoping for. They've been looking for guys like Bradley Beal, Damian Lillard, C.J. McCollum, maybe even Ben Simmons. This is not of that caliber. Trading away Eric Paschal, who saw in his rookie contract, has one more year left, a base salary this upcoming year of around $1.8 million. And in exchange, the Warriors getting back a future second round pick. I'm wondering if the Warriors are making this deal because of the, some of the other signings that they've made. Bringing in Otto Porter Jr., Nemanja Bialica, both of those guys are forwards. Yep. You draft Jonathan Kaminga, who's a wing and a forward, and Moses Moody, who's a 3 and D guy. So Eric Paschal has ability. He's played well for the Warriors over the last couple of years since being drafted out of Villanova. I think he's been somewhat of a pleasant surprise. I just think the hey. Warriors and Bob Myers trying to get value back for a player who might have been out of the rotation. Grade the Warriors trade A, B, C, D, or F. I mean, C, <laughs> you know. You're it's an average trade. You're playing a tra play or trading a player for a second-round pick in the future. Uh, obviously, uh, not a lot going on uh, in this move. But, hey, Pascal averaged 14 points as a rookie when the whole team was hurt with Steph and Clay out, and then nine points last year. So that's bench production that is now with the Utah Jazz. Get your grades in A, B, C, D, or F. You look at what Golden State has done to this point, Chase, uh, following the NBA draft. You sign Otto Porter to a vet minimum deal, which, by the way, he had mid-level offers, so yep. he takes less money uh, to go to Golden State. Let's focus on this one a little bit here. Otto Porter, a guy who was a part of that free agency, I believe, in 2016, where literally everyone got the bag. Uh, he's made his money. He takes less as he hopes to contribute on a uh, uh, on a playoff contending team. Yeah, Otto Porter signing for a veteran's minimum contract, and he can afford to do that because he made so much money previously. We're talking about a former number five overall pick. His career hasn't lived up to those lofty expectations, but this guy for a long time has been a pretty solid player. Why I think he fits on the Warriors can play defense, he can stretch the floor a little bit, yeah. he's knocked down 40% of his career threes over time, a yep. little bit of positional versatility there as well, and he had other suitors out there, mid-level exception offers from some other teams, he yep. decides to take less money to go to Golden State, and this is a veteran player to fill out your roster, the one concern I have is the last two years, he's only played 28 and 14 games respectively, so he is somewhat injury riddled. Well, and he's also gotten stuck on teams who are trying to play younger players, so he's not getting minutes. I think he'll play in Golden State. He should get some run. Nemanja Bialica, he heads to Golden State. Kind of a stretch four type that can really shoot the ball, Chase. I like this signing. Look, it hadn't been flashy for Golden State, but... They really needed pieces for their second unit, and Porter and Bielita are two guys that can help just do that. At the NBA trade deadline, the Miami Heat acquired him from the Sacramento Kings, and I thought Bielitsa was going to be in the rotation a little bit more because at the time the Heat didn't have a player who's 6'10", 230-plus pounds, who can shoot the ball from the outside, but yep. he was kind of out of that rotation. This is a guy, though, who can knock down around 38, 39% from long distance, stretch the floor just a bit. If you want some backup minutes at either the stretch four or you want to play him at the five, yep. he can do that as well. Yeah, he's got some versatility. I like that signing quite a bit. Obviously, the big one was locking up Steph Curry. Four years, super max, $215 million chase. Doesn't look like he's ever going to leave the Bay. And I hope he doesn't because Steph Curry in a non-Warriors uniform would just be weird. It'd be jarring to the eye. And this is pretty neat. Steph Curry, the first player in NBA history to land two contracts of $200-plus million. And a big reason why he was able to secure this bag, what he was able to do last year. He was absolutely tremendous. NBA scoring title champion, averaged 32 points per night. I just can't believe the long-standing efficiency and effectiveness from long range from Steph Curry. Last year, 33 years old, didn't matter. He's defying father time somewhat, knocked down 42% of his three-point attempts. 33 is the new 25, bro. It really is. <laughs> uh, people are spending millions of dollars a year on their bodies, and sports science and medical advances have been made, and because of that, these careers are lasting longer. And for Golden State Warriors fans, that's fantastic because Steph Curry not only got it done last year, He's been doing it 
for his entire career. And I've said this a couple times. I don't think any player in the history of the NBA has been as influential in terms of changing the way that the game has played. Michael Jordan, the greatest player ever. Yeah. Culturally, an icon. Allen Iverson, culturally, an icon. They didn't change the way that the game was played, though. Steph Curry has literally done that all by himself. It's incredible. Yeah, I mean, you see kids pulling up from half court, and you're like, what are you doing? Well, Damian Lillard shooting 40% from out there. Efficiency. Kevin Durant pulls up from there. Like, hey, if you're open, Trey Young, an open 33-footer is is better than a contested 25-footer. That, yeah. that is what Steph Curry Facts. has brought to the NBA. Hey, we hope we bring you guys a lot of news and rumors and information here on Golden State Warriors today. Go subscribe, youtube.com slash Warriors TV. If you're watching on our Warriors channel, just hit that red subscribe button. We'll continue to update you guys throughout NBA free agency. And if you're on our main chat sports YouTube channel watching us live, if you're a Dubs fan, check us out, youtube.com slash Warriors TV. Much more extensive coverage on the Golden State Warriors over there. So you kind of say, okay, we're three days into this. The draft, a lot of people wanted Golden State to trade those picks, go get Bradley Beal, who doesn't appear available for whatever reason. So now you kind of sit here and you're saying, okay, what's next for Golden State? You ship out Eric Pascal, Kelly Oubre still on the, on the market. We could certainly talk about him here a little bit, Chase. Is that potentially the next move? A guy like Paul Millsap you've mentioned before as well. There's still some moves that could be made. Yeah, Paul Millsap, uh, that's a player that the Warriors are said to have interest in. So too is Andre Iguodala. There was Certainly a report Iggy. from Marcus Thompson of The Athletic that if Joe Ingles of the Utah Jazz That's were to be made available, that the Warriors would be interested in him. They just good traded with the guy, Jazz. Good three-point shooter, and exactly, they just traded with the Doesn't sound like Jazz. he's part of that trade, but so, there is a relationship there. For sure. I, I would like Iggy in a reunion there. I still think he can play in terms of giving you defense and hitting some corner threes. Paul Millsap is a former All-Star. I like him as well. These are guys who are obviously secondary players who are going to fill out your roster as maybe like the 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th guys. Yeah, we mentioned Kelly Oubre still on the open market as well. Uh, but, hey, you, you got to trust Bob Myers if you're a Warriors fan. This team has built this organization the right way, uh, dating back to really about 10 years ago now. And, or 12, if you want to just call it, with starting with Steph Curry. I mean, drafting him, the skinny kid out of Davidson, was certainly a ballsy move. And early on, you thought this kid was going to be injury prone. But the fact that you get him in here and he's a franchise changer Basically, from year two or three and beyond, hey, he's certainly worth every single dime of four years in $215 million. We'll see what's next for Golden State, and we'll have you covered once it happens. Name a free agent that you want the Golden State Warriors to sign in NBA free agency. Let us know down in the comments who you'd like to see Golden State sign. And again, quick reminder, did make a trade. Eric Pascal heading to the Utah Jazz uh, for a future second round pick. We'll see what that pick ends up being sometime down the road. Stay tuned. We'll have more coverage on the Warriors as soon as we can.